wine country is transforming. It's long, twisty, sturdy vines increasingly stunted. Grape vines are dying more frequently in Ontario due to extreme weather events, costing vineyards like this one hundreds of thousands of dollars. Richard Kosis's family owns Mountain Road Wine Company. I'm quite concerned, you know, it's, I've noticed it over the last uh, five, ten years. So kind of but he says he still doesn't support a carbon tax. It's just hurting the small people. And that's exactly the viewpoint the Ontario Progressive Conservative government is trying to cater to with its new environmental strategy. It's a plan that represents a clean break from the status quo. The province has already reduced its greenhouse gas emissions by more than 20 percent since 2005, largely by phasing out coal. Now it's pledging to reach 30 percent by 2030. And importantly, we will do this without imposing a carbon tax or otherwise making life unaffordable. The goal is in line with the Paris Accord, but not ambitious enough for the federal government. Unfortunately, Ontario wants to go back in time. Uh, they want to make it free to pollute. Under Ontario's plan, $400 million will be put into a carbon trust to partner with the private sector to adopt clean technology. A similar approach was introduced in Australia, but emissions there continue to rise. This expert says the only way forward is a carbon tax. While a carbon tax is certainly not a silver bullet, uh, it's, it's one really crucial kind of arrow in our quiver. We, we need, at the very least, that to send a signal to the market. Back at the vineyard, Kosis is inspecting his crop. It's just going to get tougher for us and we have to buckle down. He's wondering how his vines will cope with another harsh winter. Olivia Stefanovic, CBC News, Beamsville, Ontario.